Hey guys, Jake Katie here, uh, here to show you my RFID wireless system that I made for my apartment. Uh, so basically, what RFID here is, uh, we got two cards here, and uh, RFID, RFID allows you to uh, wirelessly transmit data to an inductive coil. So these cards in particular have um, a 26-bit or 30-bit or, you know, sometimes 35-bit code that um, is unique to each card, so it allows you to be authenticated with your card. So a pretty secure way to, uh, you know, transmit data and authenticate people. So let me go ahead and uh, show you the different parts to this system. Um, out here, outside the door, we got the actual um, pad, the RFID pad, that's where you uh, put the card and uh, you don't have to make contact at all, just sits right next to it. Right now it's going red because there's no card. Um, so this is a this is a Prox Pro HID RFID reader. It works at uh, 125 kilohertz. So pretty much any 125 kilohertz RFID card will work with this. Um, over here we got the actual um, the actual door latch. This is kind of where the locking mechanism works. Um, I replaced the regular plate that was here um, with this latch. It's a uh, voltage actuated, so it's got a little magnet up here in there that uh, pulls a latch up and allows this to swing free. Um, and that's actuated by just applying a little voltage across the terminals down here. So that's all wired up to uh, inside here. We got this bad boy. This is where the real magic happens. Um, this is an Arduino Mega 2560 um, hooked up to a Arduino Ethernet shield. And we, you can see we got a breadboard here with some various electronics. Um, so this, uh, this Arduino is hooked up to an outlet up here. We've got a power supply. It's running 12 volts. Uh, that's necessary for the latch and the RFID reader. Also powering the actual Arduino. Um, it's also hooked up to an Ethernet cable. It's running here all the way back to our router. Um, so the program requires quite a bit of memory. Um, it's about 35 kilobytes. So the Arduino Uno won't do it. Um, Arduino Mega is necessary for that. Uh, you can see here we've got a micro SD card right here that allows us to store the users and the um, um, and the system logs, so that if power is ever disconnected, you know you got a power outage or whatever, the uh, the system won't lose all that data, and you can just uh, you know restart and have all that data. So uh, you know here we got a, a MOSFET and stuff that helps with switching the uh, the the door latch because um, you can't have that much current running through the actual Arduino. But regardless, uh, let me show you the system working. So I've got two cards here. Uh, one on the left does not currently have access to the system. One on the right does. Um, so let me show you what it does if you don't have access first. Basically, what it's going to do is. Um, it's going to beep once, recognizing that it read the card, and then it's going to beep three times, letting you know you don't have access. And this latch is not going to do anything, because you don't have access. So, basically telling you you don't have access, you know, it stays red. But if I get this card in here, which does have access, go up there, it's going to beep once, telling you have access, and then you're going to hear a little click, letting you know that the door has opened. So, as you can see, this latch can now be moved, and the door, right now, door can't be opened. If I swipe the card, now it can swing open freely. Alright, so, pretty easy, you know, works pretty seamlessly. Um, it's pretty fast in the time that it detects the card and the time that it um, finds if the user has access or not. All right, so let me show you the real cool part about all this. Uh, so you can see here that uh, you know it's hooked up with the Ethernet. You got the Ethernet shield here. Um, what that does is that's you know routed all the way to our router, and uh, so what that does for us is basically this Arduino is set up as a server. So the, what that means is uh, it can receive commands from the internet. So we've got the port forwarding set up and all that, so that you can send commands to it from anywhere you have the internet. You know, anywhere in the world. Um, so basically the commands are interpreted as certain controls for the, uh, for the door. So uh, let me show you how some of those commands are done. 
Um, so I set up this uh, web interface here, you can kind of see um, on my website. Uh, it's got a login and everything, you know, um, nice and secure. And uh, so if I go ahead and log in here, I can take a look at my options. Um, so let's first take a look at the list users options. So I got my list users here, it'll list all the users that have access here. Uh, you can see my name right here. Um, and so, you know, the user name and their RFID. Um, so if I go ahead and uh, remove user here, just throw in my name here, and then hit remove. So I successfully removed. Go back to list users. Should no longer be listed. Indeed, I am no longer listed. Let's take a look. Uh, hopefully I don't have access. Uh, and no, I'm denied access. Alright, so now if I go back to the website, and now if I re-add myself, and go in and uh, throw my name in here, Katie, hit submit. Alright, so now this is where we get to pairing mode. So basically what pairing mode is, is matching a username to an RFID. Um, so basically once I hit pair, what's going to happen is the RFID reader is going to flash green and red, and that means it's ready to accept an RFID card. So I'm going to hit pair here and show you that it is now blinking green and red. If I scan my RFID card, it is now paired. Go back to the screen, it says it was successfully added. If all goes according to plan, I should have access. And indeed I do. See that? So a quick note on timeouts here. Um, the timeout for scanning your card is five seconds before the door automatically relocks. Um, the pairing mode, you know, is 15 seconds, um, and uh, those those times are all adjustable. Uh, you can set those to pretty much whatever you want. I found those times were appropriate. Uh, so let's move on to one of the cool features here, uh, door control. So basically what this allows you to do is control the state of the door from, you know, anywhere you have access to this website. Um, so basically I can permanently unlock and lock the door. First you can take a look at the lock status. So, you know, right now the door is locked, very much so locked. Um, so if I click unlock here, it'll unlock the door, change the status to unlocked, and you can see now that the door is in fact unlocked. And, you know, I can relock it as well, and now it is very much locked. Uh, another more recent feature is momentarily unlock. So what this does is, you know, if someone's at the door uh, just waiting to get in, you can hit momentarily unlock and basically the RFID reader will beep letting them know the door is open and then it will wait 10 seconds and then relock the door without you having to press relock. Uh, so you should be able to hear a beep once I press this and the door is now unlocked and you can see the time out there now the door has relocked automatically. So, it's a pretty convenient feature, you know. Again, settings for the time is all adjustable. You can set that to whatever you want. Uh, last feature, system log. It's good to have logs of, you know, whatever is going on. Um, basically, you can see everything we did here. Uh, door momentarily unlocked, so door locked, door unlocked. You know, granted to whoever in the user, adding users, removing users, uh, when someone gets denied access. Pretty much everything that goes on. Um, uh, it, you know, it's got a timestamp here that uh, says when it happened, and um, the time, uh, you can see here, the time is synchronized with uh, internet time servers every 12 hours, um, so it's pretty accurate, um, and yeah, just keeps track of everything that's going on, and uh, you can log out here, and uh, yeah, so that about wraps it up, uh, thanks for watching.